Hello everyone. This video will give you all the useful tips about StartLab. StartLab is a comprehensive learning program. It will make it super easy for you to set up a project-based learning approach and have your learners work in teams on unique entrepreneurial projects. From ideation to pitching, they will develop fantastic new skills with you as their coach. Let's go! For the first step, we're going to see how to access StartLab and master our environment. So to access StartLab, I just need to go in my browser research bar. I type in startlab-education.com. I can add EN to end up in the English website. However, nothing to worry about. If I don't type it, it just means I'm on the French website and I can just swap to English on the top right corner. I click on login. The institution access is for the person in charge of StatLab as an overall in the establishment you are at. It's the person who is going to create all of the supervisor's accesses and accounts. The student access is from where the learners are going to reach StatLab. They just type in a single password, and that's their unique single password, and they just end up in the challenge they would like to access to. The one we're looking at is the supervisor access, because it's my access. I type in my email address, I type in my password. If I've forgotten my password, nothing to worry about. I just click on forgotten password. It will send me an email to reset it. I confirm, and here I am in the supervisor area. What can I find in this area? I can see all of the challenges I have in the current year. So a challenge is the equivalent of a group that will then split into teams to create projects. So it can be a group, a class, a cohort, for example. I will have access to a demo challenge. Each supervisor has its own demo challenge. And the idea is to be able to play around with StartLab, discover it without impacting your students. So it's quite handy. On the top, I can find a shortcut to all of the resources of StartLab. All the ones that we have spread into StartLab, but also some extra ones such as a toolbox, all of the videos that we have in StartLab, but also help to understand what soft skills we have implemented. If I go on the help button, I end up on the help page. I can find the frequently asked questions. I might find some answers to my questions. But added to that, I can specially download the supervisor guide. The supervisor guide will give me extra information about StartLab, but also it will offer me a program in three different ways. A program to inspire me on how to plan StartLab and I can see a 20-hour course, a 30-hour course or a 40-hour course. From this I can plan. I'll go back to this aspect later on. And I can finally access to my information, change passwords if I need to and finally I can log out from here. And here we are, you've mastered step one. To start step two, let's put a bit of context. I am in charge of an extracurricular club named Project Yourself. With a colleague, we aim at accompanying students who are willing to collaborate to build up projects. By doing so, we've observed that they gain on self-esteem, for example. I am ready. This time I have 12 students. They don't have a project yet, but they are eager to start. I can create a challenge on my supervisor area. A challenge is one StartLab project with one group or class, and this group will divide into teams to create different projects. To create a challenge and start with a group, I simply need to click on New Challenge. I type in the name of my challenge. So as I said, for me here, it's called Project... 
project yourself. I click on send and here I have a new challenge and I can find it at the bottom. If I want to rename it, let's say it's not as precise as I thought and my learners need to have a bit more information, I can, for example, type in the time we're doing it, I edit and there we are a challenge that has been renamed. To access to the dashboard of the challenge, I click on details of the challenge and here I am looking at the dashboard. What can I see on the dashboard of a challenge? First of all, it's from the dashboard that I'm going to be able to paste and adapt Start Lab. So I can click on unlock the course and it will be unlocked for my learners. I can track progress by looking at either the team view to see what the teams are doing or the learners view to have a precise view of each and every student or learners. Um, in my case at the moment I have not yet set up all of my learners inside Start Lab, so I can only see a test learner. Talking about learners and teams if I want to manage them, I go in Learners and Teams. I can add any students clicking on the plus. I can generate new passwords and I can manage teams from this area. Please note that all of these aspects of Learners and Teams are going to be seen further later in the video. Finally, I can see that I can share resources with my classes. I simply need to click here, select the file, and upload the file. I can download it, I can delete it, I can rename it and my students or my learners will be able to download them from their resources. If I'm not on my own working on Start Lab on this challenge, I can always collaborate with other supervisors so I can add them click on the list, click on add. If I can't find them on the list, I can ask the administrator of Start Lab in the establishment to make sure that an account is created for my collaborator. What happens then is that the collaborator will have access to this challenge in his or her space and supervisor area. What I can do as well for myself or to collaborate is I can always leave memos and notes about a challenge. The learners won't have access to it. It will be me and only me. So it could be things I should not forget, things I've done in the sessions or things to do. And it could be a way to exchange information with other collaborators. To add learners to a challenge, all I need to do is to go in the challenge concern, click on learners and teams, and then I click on the plus sign under learners without a team. I can add learners at any time I want. However, I won't be able to delete them. To add my learners, I have two options. I can either type in the names and the first name one by one and keep on adding a learner, or I could import a list. The list has to be on CSV format. If I don't know what a CSV format is, I can simply download an example, copy paste my list into that file, save it, and there we go, I have my list. In my case, I already have a list, so I go, I find it on my computer, I upload it. Sometimes the first line is not filled in, so I just report the first student and delete the line that is empty. I need to be very careful with the spelling as once the um, learners have been entered and saved I will not be able to modify any names so I need to be careful and make sure everything is okay. In my case I'm happy with it. I create the account and there we go. I have all my learners. At the moment they all look the same and they all look a bit weird. However, once they will connect once and change their profile picture then you will have a variation of students or learners. Now that all my students or learners are created, I can then generate passwords for each and every one. Here again, I have two options. If during the, the experience, the Start Lab experience, one of your learner has forgotten his password, I will go on generate an individual password and select the learners that are concerned. 
I can add as many learners. If there are three of them, I can generate three passwords at once. I generate the download lists. So here, for example, Caroline told me she does, she's lost her password. I generate a password and I get a list. I can give her the password. In my case, I am starting. So none of my learner has a password. So I can use the other option, which is generate the list of passwords. So I go on, I click and it loads a new list of passwords for every single learner in my group. This list contains a link to access the challenge, the password links to it, and the name of the student or the learner concerned. So I can cut, I can print the list, cut it, and give the piece of paper to each and every learner. Be careful using this option as if I click on it, it will reset all of the passwords of my learners. So it could be a bit annoying if I reset everything for everyone. Let's take a look at Teams now. Um, I can decide ahead of Thought Lab to create Teams and decide which learner will go in which team. Or I can choose to wait and see what my learners come up with and ideas and projects and all of this. I'm back. So all my learners have accessed Start Lab at least once. They have managed to personalize. I can see that Nathan hasn't yet changed his avatar, so I might ask him why or if he could do it. And we are at the end of world one, so all the learners have brainstormed and they've ended up with four different projects, so four different teams. The projects haven't yet a name, so all I'm going to do for the time being is simply to call them Team 1 or Team A. I add another Team, Team B. Another one, Team C. And finally, the last one, Team D. Perfect. I have all my teams. I can always create teams and add teams. However, I won't be able to delete a team that has been created already. Now, all I need to do is to drag the right learners in the right team. So I know that in team A, I have Blake, Melissa, and Govinda. In team B, we have Jason, April, and Christian. Team C, Piyush, Nathan, and Caroline. And finally, in team D, Anne, Rodney, and Dustin. From then on, the learners, when they're going to connect to their profile, to their own Start Lab, they will be able to see a team space with team activities. So their profile will have evolved a bit. If for any reason a learner needs to change team, all I need to do is to drag and drop the learner in the team needed. I can always change the name of the team as soon as they have a name or some kind of name for their project from the progress tracking area. Here I click on the little pencil and I can change the name of the team at any time. I would like to know now what the Start Lab experience looks like as a learner. So just as a reminder, learners will access Start Lab the same way than you do, but they go to Learner Access. They type in their password. It looks something a bit like this, and they will confirm and end up in their profile. In my case, that's not what I wanted to show you because as the supervisor, I also have a direct access so that when I'm planning my sessions, I can quickly see what's going on for learners. So I go in the challenge concern 
And on the dashboard at the top right, I can find the learner mode display. I click on it. I can always go back to my supervisor area on the top right corner by clicking on the top right corner. And I connect as if I was a learner. From what I can see, every single time I'm going to go back to the app as a learner, I will be on the learning path and I will simply have to let myself guide by the content. So all I do is watching a video, reading, get inspired by other projects that could exist throughout the world. And then we always give them a practical activity to do autonomously mainly in order to develop their inspiration and get much richer conversation when they are in collective time. We always present, present them the different aspects that are going to be seen in the collective time, such as, for example, here, the impact, and then they can carry on. Learners can carry on going through the learning path as long as the learning path is unlocked. Here I can see my learning path is completely locked. Here I can see that it is been, has been done. And here I can see I can access it, but I've not seen it yet. So I carry on letting myself guide through the track. And once I reach the point where I can't go further, I would just be stuck. Just remember that you can always use the learning path to go around and go back to some content. However, you won't be able to go further if you've never seen the content. Aside from the learning path, we have access to a business plan. The business plan is a key element. It's at the core of the project and it's the document in which the teams are going to be able to synthesize their decisions for the projects and present their projects. It reuse every single aspect that we see in each and every world. The idea is that every single time I can annotate it and save it. At the end of the project, once I've decided with my team that our project is ready, I can finalize the document and send it to my supervisor. I also have access to a team, so I can see the members in here. Here is my team as a supervisor, meaning I'm on my own. I can see the badges that have been earned. I can have a direct access to the business plan. And also I can find different activities that I can complete to make sure that my project has been well thought and is very rich. Finally, I also have access to resources. I can find all of the resources spread into StartLab, but I can also find some more that can help me further different skills or also indications on what are the different soft skills that learners are going to get throughout StartLab. If I go on my profile, I can customize it and decide which avatar is going to represent me. I choose it just like for the learners. I can see and track all of the soft skills that I am developing. So going through the learning path, completing activities with my teams, completing missions, all of these elements will show that I'm developing soft skills and here I can track them. On the right, you can see my missions to complete. The idea is these are activities that are going to help deepen the reflection of each and every learner. However, they won't impact properly the projects, meaning that if learners do not do it, it won't have a major impact on the outcome of StartLab. However, they offer deeper reflections. So in, we will always structure them the same way. We're going to make you discover different jobs through videos and learning sheets. We can ask them as well to express and develop on things that they like, don't like. Remember to always save. And once you consider that your work is done, you can finalize it. However, here I can't because I've not filled in the document. 
So here, if I show you, I could say that for me, entrepreneurship is solving a problem with a solution. Then I need to decide whether or not I agree with the statements on why would I like to um, be an entrepreneur or at least discover this world of entrepreneurship. I can decide whether I agree or not and how much I agree. So this will give you an indication for each and every learner you have. So what motivates them and maybe it will help you adapt your sessions. Then I need to position myself thinking, do I think I want to have an impact or money or both? And finally, I need to just express myself on why or how or if I think it's possible. Now that I've typed in everything, I can save the changes. And now all the fields are filled in. I finalize the documents. And as a supervisor, when I will look at tracking progress and everything, I'll be able to access to each and every activity like this. As I validated, my mission is accomplished. I've earned some soft skills. So it asked me to reflect on what is entrepreneurship, how to position myself through that. It asked me to reflect on my motivation. But ahead of that, because it's a mission, it gave me opportunities to develop my autonomy and my independence. Another type of mission, for example, would be to complete a personality test or to go on and do some quizzes. So I have a variety of activities that I can do on my own to deepen my understanding and to go further in some subjects. Each and every mission is related to the world it's, we are at. As long as I haven't, as a supervisor, unlocked the rest of the learning path, some of the missions are going to be blocked until they can finish. Finally, on my profile, I can consult and see all of the badges that I've gained from using StartLab. These badges can be earned from simply going through the learning path and learning things, but also from completing missions, quizzes, activities, and all of this. And here you have a full idea of all the different opportunities that learners can have on their In step four, we will see how to pace the learning path, how to track progress, and how to reward efforts. While discovering a challenge dashboard, we mentioned that you decide how learners interact with the learning content. StartLab is divided in five worlds. In world one, learners discover the notions of entrepreneurship and impact. Then they will bring brainstorm over problems they would like to solve and create their teams. And finally, they will start having some kind of a draft to their solutions. In world two, it's time to discover the ecosystem of the idea or the project. So the learners will look for competitors or other projects that look quite similar. They will define their targets, they will make a persona, and they will check the hypothesis by creating an online survey, for example. In world three, it's the world of finances, resources, and prototyping. Learners define all of the resources they would need to make their project happen. They can therefore plan a budget and maybe realize a prototype for their project. World four is the world of creativity and communication. It is often the most preferred world. In World 4, teams confirm the name for their project, they design a logo, they can create a communication around their project, like a flyer, an ad, or even a social account for their project. And finally, in World 5, teams prepare an oral presentation and a pitch. It can be done as a video, or you can choose to organize a pitching ceremony. It would be the occasion to invite guests and reward them with the attestation at the end of StartLab. To help you adapt to your learner's pace, 
each world is divided into. Each two sections contain one individual session that can be done autonomously on the app and allow the learner to learn, to understand, to comprehend and to go further in one notion so that the collective session can be dedicated mainly to building up the project and have rich debate on decisions that could impact projects. I can decide that learners will all go at the same pace and so I'm going to open half by half just by clicking on unlock the rest of the course and unlock. Be careful once you've unlocked it you can't relock again. So I can decide to do half by half. I could decide to open one whole world so that they go at their own pace. I could decide that the first world until they have an idea and the team will be at the same pace. However, I'm going to leave all the content up to world five for each team to go at their own pace. Or I could decide to unlock absolutely everything. Usually what we do is with younger learners, we tend to go at the same pace. For older learners, then we can let them go the way they want. I would like to know now how to track progress, both collective and individual progress. So first of all, let's look at the collective one. I'm on the challenge dashboard. I'm on progress tracking. And I can see for each team what they have done, where they are at, and all of this. So I can see when it's a tick in green, I can see that a document has been finalized and that the team is happy with their work. They cannot edit it again once they've clicked on finalize the document. If it's not in green yet, it means it has been completed, but they're not completely sure of what they've done. And they might want to bring some changes, so they've not finalized it yet. And I can see the same dynamic for the business plan and the different elements. Here I can see that one logo has been updated, but I can find that one image is waiting for my validation. It means they have uploaded it on their business plan. They've saved the changes, but as a moderation, they cannot see what picture they have submitted until I decide whether or not it is appropriate. Here is the team picture. I'm happy with it. They look so happy on this photo. I confirm. And there we go. I have moderated my picture. I can refer to every piece of work that learners and teams have done. I can see the badges. I'm going to talk about it in a second. And I can find out different histories and notifications on what the teams have done. If I look at the learner's view, I can see for each and every learner where they are at. So I can see which team they're in, the last connection they've had, where they're at on the learning path. Here I have just unlocked real world four, so it's normal that Christian is still on world three. However, I can see that for others, they are not yet at the same place. For example, Nathan is still in World 1, which is kind of weird. It means that he hasn't learned, he hasn't gone through the learning path. I need to talk about it with him. However, from what I can see, Nathan has completed a lot of missions, meaning that maybe the learning path is doing it with someone else on someone else's app. However, he's been very thorough in completing missions, from what I can see. So... It doesn't mean he's not interested by Starland. Maybe it could be a team problem, for example, in which case I can talk with him. I can find out the different soft skills that learners have acquired during Startlab. So remember, as they go through the learning path and they build up their projects, as they complete missions, as they gain badges, the learners are going to get some soft skills points. And that's what it looks like. I can see the badges that they've earned and I can refer to every single mission that has been submitted. So I can find quite a lot of information for each and every learner so that I can make sure that my adaptation is relevant.
Finally, in step four, I would like to know how to reward the extra effort that some learners might have done. For example, team B, I know that they have not just designed the logo, what they've done is gone further what I asked them to do because they have decided to learn and master a design system software. So they've created from scratch a beautiful, beautiful logo and they have reflected a long time on the colors and everything. So I was very impressed by the work they've done, in which case they've gone further. My expectations, I would like to reward them with a team badge, a team effort, and we have one for the logo. So they've done a specially good logo. I award them with the badge. So each and every member of the team will be awarded with a badge. I can find all of the significations of the badges in the pedagogical guides if ever I need to. Otherwise, I can just click and see what is put behind it. Here I can see if my team has been very creative throughout the whole of StatLab, they have managed to find new ideas and bounce when they realized that some of their previous ideas were not relevant enough. I was very impressed with that. They went further my expectations, in which case I award them with a badge. Be careful once awarded, you cannot take a badge away. And there we are for step four. In step five, we're going to see how to plan StartLab and how to plan each and every collective sessions. So, as a reminder, you can find in on the help page the supervisor guide. The supervisor guide will give you suggestions divided in 20 hours, 30 hours or 40 hour sequences. I have decided to go for the 30 hour one. So, and as it's my first use of StartLab, I am going to just simply get guided, do as it is suggested to me so that everything goes well. Once I want to use it a second time Start Lab, I will be more at ease in using it. So what I can do is simply refer when I plan a collective session is refer to the sheet that is related to it. I can see how the time has been divided. I can see how to prepare it, what to prepare in advance of the session so that I feel comfortable planning it and being with the learners. And then I can see all the different activities available for me. Here I'm at session one. What can I do if I want to plan session one? I go in resources, world one, and I can find different resources that are available for me. I can find a PowerPoint, that is going to help me and help learners memorize and, and understand better the different themes. I can find a pedagogical worksheet. So it looks something like this. It gives me an overview of the PowerPoint and added to it, it gives me a better understanding of which slide and how to make sure that I am confident with the support I am getting. I can also find sometimes worksheets to go deeper and to make sure that learners are getting the most and the best comprehension. All of these learning sheets are, you can fill them in digitally, so on your computer, as long as you remember to save when you have updated it. And they all allow learners to further their understanding of a topic, for example. I can download them, I can print them. It's up to me depending on the resources I have with me. So to plan my sessions, I have all of this with me. Remember as well, if I need to remember quickly what was the last thing that my learners have seen, I can go on my challenge, go on the learner display mode, and I can find out the different elements that the learners are seeing before my session, before the collective one, so I can make sure I'm as precise and relevant as possible, depending on what they have just learned. On the resource page, 
I can find out all of the different resources that are inside StatLab. As we have seen before, some of the resources have been put into digital so that it makes it easier to collaborate and for you to keep track. However, be aware that every single resource is also available as a paper version of it. For example, to find a competitor, I can see it's a paper version. It means that, for example, I can use it as a draft with my teams and finally I can ask them to fill in the website, the app. So it depends on the resources I have available, but also how I want to function with my learners. So just be aware that every resource is available as a paper format and some of them have been given available throughout all the different contents and missions that can be done. I am now at the end of StartLab. Before pitching properly the projects, I need to make sure that everything is ready. I can check that all the worksheets have been completed, validated, all the photos are there. I will be I can also just check if I want to add some more logos, for example. Here I can see the prototype they've sent me is amazing. I'm very impressed. I make sure I award them with a badge just before the end. And I can finally complete the course. By completing the course, I do not make StartLab disappear, don't worry. By completing the course, I just make sure that StartLab is over and I can generate the attestation. Okay, so complete the course. As I said, I just made sure I check and there I go. I download the certificates. It will open in one single PDF file as all of the members of the group's certificates. Please note that learners still have access to StartLab, but their progression won't be taken into account in the certificates. Each learner keeps track of their experience. They can see the soft skills that they have gained, the badges they've earned, and all the knowledge, soft skills, and expertise they have trained during the experience. It will make it easier for them to lighten up their resume, for example. Finally, you can leave a personalized comment or ask learners to sum up their project in the project box. There we go. You know everything there is to know about StartLab. We wish you a pleasant experience.